Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Environment Matters. I'm Mike Huff. I'll be filling in for Annette for the next few weeks while we're all working remotely. Because many of the events that we normally tell you about have been canceled or postponed due to the coronavirus, we thought we'd uh, look at some of our favorite stories from previous seasons, starting with this one from 2016. If you're a serious angler and you're interested in fly fishing for native brook trout, then West Virginia's Cherry River is probably on your list of favorite destinations. But along its south branch, sediment from mining and logging activity over the years in the watershed has left the stream in less than pristine condition. A lot of what you see in, a, in these disturbed forest channels, uh, it's just a, a steep, flat stream with, with no pools, really. Uh, you lack the large woody debris that you find in some of the more pristine environments. And uh, what we're looking at doing is increasing pool-to-pool -pool spacing for uh, you know, thermal refuge and uh, predatory refuge for trout. Um, we're looking at linking up the pool habitats with, with well-defined channel thaw leg and uh, you know, just giving a place for the, making a place for the fish to go and uh, an avenue for them to get there. The solution? Redirect the flow of water with engineered structures made from large logs to narrow the channel and use the force of the water to scour out the sediment. These same techniques have already proven effective on large streams, like here on Coal River, to improve stream flow and control sediment. But this was the first time it was tried on a small native brook trout stream. The change has been dramatic. I'm very happy with what's, what's been done and how it's holding up. I mean, it's really amazing, especially on a stream of this size, to see how the river responds to what you do. Uh, just in this section behind me, we can see structures that were put in last fall and last summer that are completely buried and have narrowed a channel that was 40, 50 feet wide of two inch water. Well, now we've got less than 10 feet of six to eight inch deep water that the trout can live in and swim and travel back and forth. The project was paid for with money from the DEP's Stream Restoration Fund. The DEP and the West Virginia Conservation Agency worked together to identify areas suitable for projects like this in order to get the most bang for the buck from the funds. For Environment Matters, I'm Mike Huff. Thanks for watching.